wraps up the weather for now. We'll be talking to Lewis Tillett in just a moment and we'll be discussing his album The Hanged Man today and uh, from the album Back From The Sea. We'll play that track now and uh, then we'll be talking to Lewis about the rest of the album.
from the sea there from Lewis Tillett's album The Hanged Man. The album was recorded in Bangkok in July 2004 with a local engineer called O. It was released in 2005 and although the title may sound morose, the album features, and I quote, music as vital, beautiful, emotional and uncompromising as any in the history of Australian rock. This is Lewis embracing the very joyousness of a bright future. Yes, well, there. If we can go back to uh, talking about uh, the uh, the previous album, "Learning to Die," um, uh, I didn't get a chance to mention uh, in in our last chat how that ended up. Uh, I yes, uh, I was I was overseas uh, performing, and it was an incredibly grueling tour. I was playing solo, and it was the only time in out of literally many thousands of gigs that I'd, I'd turned up at a venue uh, and the very last show in Germany was unable to play through pure exhaustion and and that 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 sort of left me with a, a uh, just a, a a bad feeling because unlike say playing here in Australia uh, Okay, you can mess up a gig, and which is not good, but uh, you can redeem yourself if you like. Uh, maybe the week later, or or before too long. But it was a small town. I'd never played it before. People had driven hundreds of kilometres, mm. and I was uh, uh, laying on the couch and so exhausted that uh, you know, that, uh, basically, if someone held a gun to my head and said, "Get up and play," I would have said, "Well." You know they shoot horses, don't they? And and uh, um, I was just unable to physically unable to do it. And uh, and from there uh, headed down to Greece and played a uh, again hoping to okay another country, another audience. Uh, an incredibly dreadful show, which normally I'd played great shows in Greece. It was I, I, I was so still exhausted. Uh, I was put on in, in almost like a dance nightclub with a, a support band, a sort of funk band, and everything was wrong. I was in a bad mood. Everything, you know, I thought, what a way to to end up. And I've got a, a, a good friend over there, and and I, I once I'd I'd overcome. Uh, feeling bad about that, I thought, no, no, it, it can't, can't end this way, and um, and so I said to him, uh, listen, in all of Athens, there must be a room that doesn't normally have music on, but are, are willing to to you know have me or have someone play, and and I said I've got to do something to to redeem myself, and he, he thought about it for a while, and and he said, well, there's this little um little place called the small music theatre and I said he said it's tiny uh, they basically teach music and experimental music upstairs and and have small shows just for their students and and teachers uh, downstairs and, and but rarely do they put on live gigs I said it sounds perfect and then walked in into this uh, little room and thought this is just great and the 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 owner came down and he was chatting to uh, our mutual friend, and it, it, he was convinced that uh, I must be a Lewis Tillett impersonator. <laughs> it sort of gave me ideas for the future. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he, that he couldn't believe that you know this guy was, wanted to play in his his little room, but uh, I did and ended up playing I think three shows that were just just sensational then then a bit later the 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 guys from the dirty three came down and i caught up with them and and played with them and and so it all all ended on on a positive positive note and 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 from there uh i was going on to record an album which unfortunately never materialized but i, I was going to stay there in in athens or actually to be to be I'm not sure. I, I, I think I came to Australia for a, a, a very short period of time and up stumps and went back to Athens, got myself a, a little flat there and um, and I was meant to be recording a, an album on an island called uh, Hydra, which is uh, an island where Leonard Cohen's been living for, for decades and he has a studio there. This is before he came out of uh, retirement. And and all of these these 
since the, the Dirty Three, uh, I'd caught up with them and they'd, they'd seen me in a, in a really positive state of mind and 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 playing well. It it it, it brought you know the best wishes and and regards from a lot of people, all the guys from the the Bad Seeds. Polly Harvey and a whole whole bunch of people and and they all wanted to come down and record with me in Hydra and unfortunately the little label went into financial difficulties I mean well serious difficulties and and um, and that wasn't able to be fulfilled so even though I'd said the Hanged Man was uh, not not the Hanged Man the, the uh, Learning, Learning to, to Die was going to be my last album I was going to do that album in Hydra and uh, hit another downer and came back to uh, Australia. Right, because and that will e- explain um, the gap because that previous album, a uh, solo album in two thousand and one, uh, "Learning to Die," and it, you said, of course, um, that you made a decision that it would be your last album because you felt no one was listening, and uh, especially here in Australia, and your efforts and talent was falling on deaf ears. But something else, obviously, there must have been some other. You know things that happened um, between then and this album that truly turned things around in more ways than one. So, was there a defining moment? There, there, there was, and it, it seems to be these never-ending progressions of never say never again type of thing. But uh, as I'd decided, uh, "Learning to Die" would be my last album, and then had got this boost after playing at the small music theatre in Greece, and then saying I'll make another one, which is the on the island of Hydra. I was suddenly yet was unable to do it and yes. get in a, a tormented state and also my health. I was basically exhausted. I was at my my wits end and uh, prepared to, you know, well, many times I've been prepared to do anything to, to regain my health. Uh, but one thing that I had never fully taken on board was the amount of time that it takes to recover. I'd often get treatment and then say, I'm okay now, I've got to start, you know, picking up where I left off and and, and race into it and, and hadn't given myself the time. So I made a, a firm commitment, which I, I didn't follow through eventually, a <laughs> uh, firm commitment not to leave Australia's shores until I'd done anything, if there was anything possible to, to help me through this. And I'd mentioned to a uh, psychiatrist uh, that I'd had... Um, ECT before, which stands for electroconvulsive therapy or shock treatment, but uh, I'd found it a bit too grueling, uh, and, uh, and 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 it had actually worked very effectively. But I, I'd 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 ceased uh, or they'd ceased uh, treatment before I'd run its full course. So this time I said, you know, whatever it takes, just keep keep hammering me until something something gives and. And I persevered with that. The, the The first episode of it was was very difficult. Uh, these days, for anyone who who suffers uh, depression, that uh, nothing will seem to shake medication, any other form of treatment. Uh, I, I can strongly say, you know, do not fear ECT, because um, unless you've got a weird constitution like me, which is because I, I've been on such heavy medication for so long which were major tranquilizers, things like Ligactyl, and they don't, or they rarely use them these days. And, and subsequently I had a very high immunity to sedatives, tranquilizers, and I'd explain this to the anaesthetist, and I wasn't anaesthetized enough, and I was, I was awake through the entire procedure, which was no good. <laughs> But the muscle relaxant worked, and then I found I couldn't breathe, and uh, and and it, it really scared the hell out of the the the, the doctors as, as as well. But uh, despite that unpleasant experience, I, that wasn't going to perturb me. I said, you know, let's get the anaesthetic sorted and keep going, which they did, and um, I think I got something like twenty doses of what they call bilateral, which is right across the frontal lobe. And like most forms of treatment, like uh, medication, there's a general rule of thumb that the the more effective, the more side effects. And uh, and eventually, the this crippling depression uh, broke, and, and it was just heaven on earth. And 
they, they'd said that because of the, the dose and being across the frontal lobe, which uh, deals a lot with one's uh, cognitive abilities, uh, that there'll be you know quite a lot of memory loss, but it does pass. And and I emphasise for anyone who's you know considering it to, to seriously consider it. Um, and it does pass, but for me, I'd had such a large amount, it took a long time. And, you know, for a, for a month or two afterwards, I was walking around bumping in, into people that I'd known all of my life uh -huh. and said, and it became a stock standard answer. I've had ECT, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. Oh, dear. And, and yet it was still to have got through this... Um, this, this almighty burden that was weighing me down. It, it was, was well and truly worth it. And from there, I broke <laughs> my promise to stay in Australia, stay put, do nothing until I'd um, sorted out my, my, my health. But again, I'd, I was feeling basically so much better after the ECT that I, I started to think, you know, um, twiddling my thumbs, I really need something t to do. But no, I won't, won't necessarily play music, won't go down that road again. And I had a, a friend in, uh, who'd moved to, to Bangkok some years before after that, you know, seemed to have this strange thing about uh, going to Thailand or Bangkok, and, I, and I've never had any particular, you know, dreams to go there. Destiny just seems to uh, take me over there. But uh, he, he was a great friend who'd, who'd run one of the venues that I'd played at uh, uh, for, for, for years before in a band called Paris Screen, and and he, he was over there as, a, as an academic, and I went over there to stay with him and, and embark on this this particular project that never eventuated. And then there I was out of the country. The, the thing that I'd planned to do wasn't happening yet again. And and despite the ECT, I was basically on the precipice. Either I go down where I'd been before or something. And hence the and I said, I'm going to make an album, and it was to basically uh, to make it for the the Greeks who had gone temporarily, sort of if not bankrupt, but under, and it was sort of to present them with an album to help them out, and also to help me. And I found myself in Bangkok, and I just thought, right, I don't know any musicians. Uh, I said to my friend Steve, um, can you find me a studio and an engineer? And uh, he said, "Yeah, I know this fellow called O, and I still to this day don't know <laughs> any more about his 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 sec surname or and um, and and then met up with O and recorded, wrote the album, recorded with him, recorded it with him, and and it was truly the the, the first that uh, album that I call a solo album insofar as that." Uh, uh, Every every sound on the on the album I created, I played everything on it, and uh, and and the result is is what you see before you or he here as you if you put it on. And the title of the album, The Hanged Man, is from the the tarot card, which I'm not a I don't know a great deal about the tarot, but again, a lot of my albums seem to come back to it. Uh, the the Hanged Man. In, in, in very simplistic terms, I understand it to mean someone who's who's on the precipice uh, needs to uh, give up everything in the past, take a leap into the void uh, to move on to a, a new future. Right, okay. Um, so when you had the ECT, um, it would have been about, about 2002, 2003, would you yeah, say? Yeah, it, it, it would have been... T uh, t t uh, 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 it's, because you know, 2001 was uh, uh, when it would have been to early 2003 out. because right. um, yeah. uh, it was in 2003 that I actually start went to to Bangkok, and 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 it was also an album, uh, having playing everything uh, myself. I was able to do it in small pieces rather than this this frenetic four days in the studio. That's it. I was able to do a little piece, maybe eight hours a week, and then build it up over many many months and. By, by 2004 it was finished right okay um, because when the um, the album came out in 2005 you you've actually reached the ripe old age of 46 um, so where were you you were obviously your health wise then was pr pretty good yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it, 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 I'd, 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 I'd uh, managed to uh, get rid of all of these uh, 
heavy duty medications because mm, uh, it's only five years ago yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah I, I mean the the uh the, the, the doses of, of Ligactyl that I was taking, apparently a toxic dose is 800 milligrams, and I was up to 11 or 1,200. And, and I'd, I'd had a number of uh, accidents uh, prior to that. And, you know, going into a surgical ward, they, they ask you a bit of your history. They say, are you on re- regular medication? And I'd say, yeah, 11, 1,200 milligrams of Ligactyl. And they'd say, no, I think you've got, got your numbers wrong there. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd say, no, it's true. And they'd cross-check and say, wow. Yeah. And uh, find it hard to believe. they say, you're up and wander- wandering around happy, you know. And yeah. It's hard to believe. So I'd, I'd taken that, that, that burden away. Um, uh, subsequently, the... The, the the this 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 binge drinking, you know, ECT does not cure alcoholism. It, it, it's they've, they've tried it with alcohol, but for me, it, it treated the underlying cause. So, alcohol left my life. I, I no longer uh, this. I, I mean, I hated drinking. I really hated it, and um, and it's not someone who enjoyed drinking and it then got out of control. It was it was I was always a very reluctant drinker. But you know, the, the less of the of the two evils and uh, so drinking became less of my life and then ceased to be part of my life at all. Uh, I was able to look at some interim medications that were way, way milder and then not have to take them every single day, but only, yeah, you know, if I started to slide, I was able to work a lot more on the, the, the mountains of, of therapy and psychology that I'd I'd learnt, but even though it was it was going in, I wasn't able to put it into practice because I was too paralysed by those other symptoms. So, health-wise, I was a lot better. Uh, financially, the same as usual, broke, uh, <laughs> homeless. Uh, that was nothing new. And so, uh, uh, so uh, where were you homeless at? <laughs> I, I was homeless in Sydney. Right. Homeless in Sydney, and, yeah. and, and stayed there for quite some time. And. Uh, uh, actually, homeless is not quite right. I, uh, I, 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 I did manage to have a few couches that I could right. stay on. Well, so you've I been homeless a few times in your life, but we'll uh, we'll talk about that um, mm. th- towards the end of our journey. Um, now, next week we'll be discussing uh, the album Soliloquy, Soliloquy, an album funded by the Australia Council of the Arts and released in two thousand and six. So this will be um, week ten in our twelve week journey of. Um, your life so far yes and uh and uh, it's i'm um, hoping that we're starting to pick up to the that that, that happier ending and again with these almost reverse meanings this uh, i think this song that we're going to hear at the end called teary eyes yes is, but they're, they're, they're tears of joy yes mm. so okay well that's about it we are going to go up with um the track teary eyes from your album uh the hanged man Thank you so much, Ari. Thank you, Lewis. It's always fascinating your your journey, and course, I mean, there's so much more we could. Oh, oh, oh there, there, <laughs> there, 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 there is. It, it, it's, it's, it's. Um, uh, I, I could only emphasise to people that uh, that, 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 that we're, we're just touching on, yes. on 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 things here, and and to be quite honest, a lot of it, uh, even to me, sounds unbelievable, and. Um, you know, it's 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 wonderful to have the opportunity to yes. at least give a, a few a few little glimpses of what's been going exactly. on. Exactly. Well, it, it, that's as you say, it, it's good just to have the opportunity and uh, um, and and you you know if we can um, hear you your side of the story. Whereas you know, there's people everywhere, isn't there, that have got stories, but they don't always get to tell it. So that, 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 that's that's true, and and I help it. Uh, I, I hope it helps people sort of put the music uh, a little more into into context and uh you know uh, from uh criticisms in the past not so much criticism rather comments people saying you know prophet of of gloom and misery but again i i i can't emphasize strongly enough that i, I don't consider myself a prophet of doom at all um life has been difficult at times and uh and uh, but those moments of sunshine have been particularly spectacular and, and well yeah. worth it. All right, Lewis Tillett, singer songwriter, and this is Teary Eyes from the album The Hangman. And we'll see you same time next week, Lewis. I look forward to it, Irene. <laughs>
Lewis Tillett there, and the track was Teary Eyes from the album uh, The Hanged Man, 2005. It's time now for... (laughs) 